السلام عليكم هاي المحاضرة راح ان شاء الله نتكلم عن هيدات الديزيز بهاي المحاضرة راح نتكلم شوي عن الاورجانيزم little bit of history epidemiology transmission disease in humans animals and prevention and control the organism itself is a cystoid parasite and the most common uh, found organism is Echinococcus granulosus. Uh, the rest are uh, also potential causes but are less frequent. The parasite morphology is about 3 to 8 millimeter long and it's compromised of its colleagues immature proglotid, mature proglotid and gravid proglotid or uterus uh, and uh, the diagram on the right gives you an impression of its morphology uh, epidemiology of the disease it's a worldwide uh, parasite and uh, the main types are Echinococcus granulosus and Multiricularis. Um, uh, it's, it's a very common condition in the Middle East, especially in Jordan. The definitive host ingests the cyst, the metacystode, uh, found in the tissue of the intermediate uh, host, such as the cattle or humans, and the cyst then will develop into tapeworms in the host or definitive host small intestine. The gravid proglotid uh, or the egg, egg shed in the feces from the definitive host that will contaminate the grass that will be eaten by the intermediate host and the larvae are released and that will penetrate the uh, bowel wall and through the circulation will, will reach the liver. And this picture just illustrates the life cycle of the uh, hydatid uh, disease. Pathologically wise, the hydatid cyst is comprised of three layers. The outer paracystic layer, uh, mainly composed of modified host cells that, that form dense and fibrous protective area, the middle laminated membrane which is acellular and but uh, on the other hand it will allow the passage of nutrients and the inner germinal layer which uh, is the site of the formation of the scoliosis, the larval stage of the parasite and also produce the laminated membrane. And this slide will show you the different uh, layers of the hydatid cyst. This slide shows you how the uh, the different layers and their relationship to the formation of the daughter cyst. This is the parish cyst. This is the uh, the laminated membrane, and this is the germinal layer or the inner cyst, and it starts to form, as you can see here, the uh, daughter cyst and inside the daughter cyst are the uh, protoscolex. Once uh, eaten by the definitive hosts, they will transform in the adult, adult uh, worm that will start the cycle all over again. And the daughter vesicles or the broad capsule are small spheres which contain the contain the Brotus colex. Once they are released from the main uh, cyst, they will form later on daughter cyst. The hydatid sand is collectively formed from the broad capsules or the uh, daughter vesicles along with the freed Brotus colex. 
all of these will form the hydrated sand. Uh, if you examine it under the microscope, each ml of the hydrated sand contains about 400,000 scolices. The protoscolics can differentiate into uh, two directions. In the definitive host, once eaten by definitive host, they will form uh, adult tapeworms that will start producing eggs. In the intermediate host, such as the cattle or the humans, once they are eaten, they will uh, uh, release the protoscolics, which will produce further uh, new hydatid cysts in different body organs. The definitive hosts, as you are aware, are dogs, cats, and uh, wild carnivores, such as fox and bats. Intermediate hosts, such as uh, herbivores, small mammals, rodents, and humans. The disease in humans, we are aware that the incubation period uh, is variable from months to years. Uh, it could take 20 or 30 years for slow growth of the hydatid uh, cyst. It can be asymptomatic and usually it becomes calcified. Uh, clinical presentation depends on the size, number and the location of these cysts. Clinically, they, they are commonly asymptomatic in three quarters of the cases. It can produce pressure symptoms uh, with mass effect and liver dysfunction, lung problems, or if they are in the uh, brain, uh, CNS manifestation. It can cause abdominal pain in 20% of the uh, people affected, jaundice in 10%. It can cause allergic reaction if the cyst ruptures, and that can result in anaphylactic shock. Eosinophilia is present in one-third of the uh, patients. Uh, the cyst tends to have microfractures or uh, small ruptures, releasing some of the hydatid sand along with the germinal layer or the uh, daughter vesicles which can produce further daughter cysts in the same originally affected organ or in different organs. Also, it can get infected. We are aware that hydatid disease caused by Shinokokasa granulosis uh, commonly affects the liver in about two-thirds of the patients, and the most common lobe affected, 80% is the right lobe could also affect in one quarter of the cases the lungs. It can be found anywhere in the body, the bone, kidney, spleen, muscles, CNS, and in the eye. Uh, the symptoms again depends on the uh, cyst location, its size, and number. Leakage of the fluid cyst can cause anaphylactic reaction. Machinococcus multilocularis also is commonly found in the liver. The cysts are not typically enclosed with, within a membrane. It can invade the surrounding tissue, and the disease is usually progressive, and it, it follows a more malignant and uh, aggressive behavior. It can be asymptomatic, and that is as uh, the cyst is uh, killed by the body immune system The methods to diagnose hydatid disease uh, depends on mainly imaging and serology. Imaging, either by ultrasound CT scan or MRI, serology, ELISA, or uh, indirect immunofluorescence techniques, biopsy is a controversial issue, as it could result into rupture of the cyst and anaphylactic reaction. 
In this slide, you can see a cyst here sitting in the right lobe of the liver, and that cyst is suspicious of being hydatid. So once you see that uh, in your clinic, think about hydatid disease, and to confirm it, you should just do uh, blood test immunology to confirm its presence. So when you see such a cyst on an imaging, these are the potential causes, pyogenic and maybe hydatid or congenital or cystadenoma, and these are the features to differentiate which is which. But again, it, it can be very difficult to differentiate merely on the CT uh, image or ultrasound uh, image, and you uh, need to utilize uh, the immunological study. Treatment option, one is wait and see, and this is uh, an acceptable approach in patient who have small cysts, less than four centimeter, or if the cyst is located deep in the liver and in uncomplicated liver cyst. Alternatively, medical percutaneous or surgical approaches are available options. Medical treatment, mainly anti-helminths, antiparasitic agents such as uh, albendazole or mebendazole, and they are successful in only 30% uh, of the cases. Albendazole is a drug of choice. It is rapidly absorbed from the small bowel, metabolized by the liver. The dose is usually 10 mg per kg, which is about 400 mg twice a day. You need to give it three months preoperatively and one month after the surgery. Uh, mebendazole is poorly absorbed and inactivated by the liver. If you use medical therapy alone, uh, you can have up to 70 or 80 percent recurrence rate. So the medical treatment, if you are going to use it, either in combination with surgery or with a drainage aspiration procedure, or if the patient is not fit for surgical intervention. Pair treatment is puncture, aspiration, injection, scolocidal agent, and respiration. The scolocidal agent that we commonly use is ethanol, in the concentration of 70 to 95 percent. Hypertonic saline is another acceptable scolocidal agent. Cetramide or chlorohexidine gluconate also uh, considered effective scolocidal agent. Now the use of pair along with albendazole, we have about 70% success rate and the recurrence rate is also very small. The principle of surgical treatment you need to eradicate the parasite within the cyst and to protect the host against the spillage of scoliosis and anaphylaxis. Eliminate all viable elements of the cyst. Manage the residual cavity of the cyst and manage the complications. Surgery is considered the mainstay treatment for uncomplicated hydatid disease of the liver and you have a number of surgical options. One of them is surgical removal of the cyst, which is called paracystectomy. And you can achieve paracystectomy either with open or laparoscopic technique. Cyst evacuation is another alternative, and it also can be achieved via open or laparoscopic approaches. Liver resection and liver transplant in advanced and complicated cases. The outcome of surgery, uh, people who, who undergo surgery, they enjoy low recurrence rate, around 10%, but on the other hand, they, there is a risk of mortality, 5%, and morbidity up to 30%, and these are the result of septic shock peritoneal spillage or due to the presence of comorbidity such as
malnutrition. The uh, method of preventing this, this condition in humans is to minimize the risk of egg ingestion. So you need to wash fruits and vegetables carefully, wash your hands frequently, avoid untreated water sources, do not handle uh, wild carnivores or their carcasses uh, carelessly, and thoroughly cook meat before eating. Unfortunately, there is a no proven effective vaccination for humans. To prevent the condition uh, in animals, regular surveillance is a, uh, a must. Infected animals, such as dogs, can be treated with uh, present quintal and uh, they will require multiple doses, uh, elimination or forbidding uh, slaughter of sheep in farms and sheep vaccination.